This is Jill Tao from the SAS Technical Support Statistics Group. Today's presentation will help you understand the subject equal effect in SAS mixed models software. I will start with models with one subject effect. Examples will include a random intercept model and a random intercept and slope model. And this will lead to a closer look at the G matrix. Then I will talk about models with more than one subject effect. Issues include whether you should specify the subject effects as crossed or nested, how do you specify the models so they are more numerically efficient, and what it means to make the model processed by subjects. Finally, I will use a model with both random and repeated statements to further explore the subject effect, and I will explain the R matrix as well. Let's begin with this simple example, which consists of data from several hospitals. Each hospital has multiple patients, and each patient has four measurements of X, a covariate, and Y, the response variable. Let's ignore the hospital for now. Just consider the random patient effect. You can fit a random intercept model. This model is equivalent to the second model statistically, so you will get identical results, but using the subject equal effect is more numerically efficient because the procedure will block the variance, covariance matrix, meaning that the computation is faster and less memory is consumed. A random intercept and slope model adds the covariate x to the random statement. The subject effect is unchanged. The type equals un option specifies an unstructured variance covariance matrix. The statistical model specified by this program is defined in this equation. The model statement estimates the population intercept and population slope. The random statement estimates the intercept deviation and the slope deviation for subject i. We assume the intercept deviation a i star follows the normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma a squared. The slope deviation b i star follows the normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma b squared. And the covariance between the two random effects is sigma a b. The model might be depicted by this graph in which the thick black line represents the predicted model for the population, and each thinner line represents the predicted model for each subject. In this case, that's patient. The G matrix is the variance covariance matrix associated with the random effects. For this model, the G matrix is a block diagonal matrix as displayed here. Each block corresponds to each subject, in this case, each patient. And you have eight patients in the data set, therefore eight blocks in this matrix. Each block has two random effects, intercept and slope, whose covariance matrix is defined by the UN structure as shown in this matrix here. All blocks are identical, that is, each block has the UN structure with the same set of parameter estimates. Now let's add the hospital to the model. There are really two random effects, hospital and patient. You might use the two random statements to specify this model. Because patients are uniquely labeled in the data set, you can just use the first model here. Conceptually, patients are nested within hospitals, assuming patients do not go to different hospitals. Alternatively, you could use patient nested within a hospital to represent the patient random effect. For this particular data, you would get the same results. However, nesting is preferred because you will have a common subject hospital in both random statements, which makes the procedure process the model by subjects and is therefore more numerically efficient. Now suppose the data are presented in a different way. The values for patient are not unique. The values 1, 2, 3, 4 are reused for different hospitals, and these values refer to different patients from different hospitals. Here, you must nest patient within the hospital to let the procedure know that patient 1 from hospital 1 is a different patient than patient 1 from hospital 2. So in this case, 
nesting is necessary. To summarize, the subject equals effect is used to identify the experimental units. It defines a block diagonal variance covariance matrix. If the unit is uniquely labeled in the data set, no nesting is necessary. However, if you can nest, do so because nesting might result in a common subject across two or more subject effects and therefore can make the procedure process the model by blocks. This is more numerically efficient. For the subject equal effect, nesting using A nested within B or crossing using A by B is the same. One more point is important if you have many levels for hospital or patient or both. Suppose the values for patient are unique, then you might end up with hundreds of thousands of levels for patient. If you can renumber the values so they are reused for different hospitals, for example, from 5, 6, 7, 8 to 1, 2, 3, 4 for different hospitals, then the number of levels for the variable patient might be reduced dramatically. This can make your model more numerically efficient. The final example comes from a crossover design with repeated measures. Each patient was given three drugs, P, C, and A, in different sequences. For each drug, four hourly measurements on forced expiratory volume in one second, FEV1, were obtained. There are two levels of experimental units or subjects. One level is at an individual patient. At this level, different treatments are administered to each patient. Another level is individual patient at a specific treatment. At this level, different time points were given to this subject. There are different models you can specify for this data. One code sample is shown here. I used random statement to estimate the random patient effect and the repeated statement to model the correlations among the four hourly repeated measures for each subject. In this case, the subject is patient by drug interaction. I used AR1 correlation structure. The repeated statement with the subject equals and type equals options define a block diagonal R matrix. The subject equal effect defines the blocks and the type equal option defines how each block looks like. All blocks look identical. This is essentially the same as the G matrix we talked about earlier in this presentation. Now let's talk a little bit more about the covariance structures in the repeated statement. This is a block diagonal R matrix. The type equals option tells you what goes into each of the blocks. The default structure is variance component. It assumes constant variance and zero covariance. This structure might not be a reasonable choice for correlated errors that are often present in repeated measures data. The most complex structure is the unstructured covariance. You have different variances and different covariances. It can sometimes be too complex and overfit your data. It can also cause memory issues or convergence issues if your number of repeated measures is large. The compound symmetry structure assumes equal variance and equal correlation. The second parameterization is what is used in ProcMixed. AR1 is one of the commonly used structures for repeated measures data. It assumes equal variance and the correlation is a power function. If the power function for the correlation decreases too rapidly for your data, you might want to consider the topless structure. This structure assumes equal variance and correlations do not need to be a power function. They can be anything estimated from the data with one restriction. The correlations that are the same distance apart, for example, time one and time two, time two and time three, time three and time four, one unit apart, are the same. Here is the selected output. The AR1 correlation is 0.7678, probably non-negligible. Sequence and period are not significant. 
An alternative model is to use one of our Chronicle product structures. You can think of individual patient as the only subject here, and there are two repeated effects for each patient, drug and hour. Then you can use this repeated statement, repeated drug and hour, subject equals patient, type equals U1 at AR1. Other two chronic product structures are U1 at UN and U1 at CS. The UN at AR1 structure for 2x2 two two UN and 3x3 three three AR1 is spelled out here. Here is the partial output. From the fit statistic table, you can see that this model does not seem to fit this data better than the first model. The p-value for sequence, however, is now 0.0516. So, which model should I use? I'm not sure if there is a right or wrong answer in many cases, but to make an educated choice, you might want to ask yourself which model makes more sense, which results are easier to interpret, which model appears to have a better fit. For this particular example, the first model appears to fit the data better. For more information, please visit support.sas.com. Have fun mixed modeling. Thank you.